Big topic, especially when I did post game yesterday, and it spilled over into uh, the national media. The, the famous M word. The famous the M word. The famous M word. <laughs> so, uh, shout out to our guys, uh, uh, and, um, Alan Hahn and the wonderful, talented Monica McNutt, who represent us well on ESPN's Get Up. They were asked to talk about the M word, and here is what they had to say: Is Tibbs to blame here for all these injuries and these guys being worn out? Here we go. I'm old enough there to remember go. when we had to put a 65 game limit in for awards. Oh, and so now let's talk we're about like, that. oh, guys are playing too much. Rah, rah, rah. Like, what do y'all want? You know what I mean? And I think you also right. have to bear in mind people, it's easy to look at the last two games in Indianapolis and say, why wasn't Alec Burks and Precious Achua in the rotation? To Perk's point, if you hoop it, Tibbs is going to leave you out there. Precious, excuse me, Alec Burks had a great game in Sacramento. Other than that, in a Nick jersey, he had struggled to be the prolific three-point shooter that he had been identified as. So 17 points in the last two games is fantastic. But down the back stretch of the regular season, it was like six and a half. When you are not in the rotation, you have a limited amount of time to make a positive impression. Beyond that, none of the guys that are playing minutes are complaining about their minutes. Mm -hmm. Isaiah Hardenstein finna get paid. Josh Hart is built to play basketball. Jalen Brunson <laughs> loves to play basketball. The same of Dante DiVincenzo. And I know earlier, Wendy, you kind of tossed out the overuse thing when it comes to OG Ananobi. I think his history comes into play. And yes, he had been over a four-game stretch where he had played the most minutes I think we've seen to this point in his career. But also, that was a little bit of a freak injury. And I have a hard time with overuse for a guy that had missed a month down the stretch of the regular season after he got traded. It's the playoffs. You play. And when he's on the floor, this team has won. Whoa. Monica dropping bars. Throw some fives in the chat for Monica McDonald. She's not here, but we're going to represent Monica McDonald because oh, she, always rep for Monica. She She's shredded one of, it. One of the man. Best. Absolutely shredded it. Your, your thoughts, bro. I mean, I agree with Monica. You know, I've never been a professional athlete, so I really don't officially know how much minutes factor. But if you look at this whole season, Tibbs wasn't overplaying anybody. The injuries happened, and some guys had to play more. You know, do you, I mean, the Knicks fans that want other guys to play, no, no disrespect to you know, Charlie Brown or any of these other guys. Do you, do you want these guys to play or Tibbs had to do what he had to do? And it's the playoffs. You know, how many teams in the NBA have a 10 or 11 man rotation in the playoffs? It's very rare. And every injury, unfortunately, were just injuries that sometimes happen when you play the game of basketball. You know, Boyan falls on Batum, you know, Batum, Batum yeah. you know, falls on Boyan. You know, Mitchell Robinson, you know, he's you know, he's had a lot of injuries over the years. But it's not like Mitchell Robinson's playing 40 minutes a game. Julius Randle flies through the air and hurts his shoulder. That's something I did in high school. Not because I played too many minutes, because I my shoulder got messed up. It happened. It sucks. No one's saying it doesn't suck. OG Ananobi, I don't I was at the game. I was sitting close to the court for game two. I don't think OG you know, when he made that move and hurt his hammy and I saw it, I don't think he pulled his hammy because he played too many minutes. I think it was because it was a basketball injury. They stink. It's part of basketball. It's part of sports. It does stink. And I always feel that Tibbs got a bad rap because of Derrick Rose. And I love Derrick Rose, one of my all-time favorite players. The way Derrick Rose played basketball, unfortunately, an injury like that probably was going to happen. I don't mean that in a bad way. It probably was. But he plays guys hard. But other than Josh, Josh has been definitely playing 48 minutes a game. Mm -hmm. But I, I just hate, and I'm a big fan of someone. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Tibbs. Um, I got to know his family. I really love the guy. And when I say this guy lives and breathes basketball, I'm sure all NBA coaches do. But Tibbs really does. So it hurts my heart when I see him get killed. Like, he, nobody, none of our guys got hurt because of Tibbs. That's absolutely asinine. Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm, and then, then let's say he played some more guys. Let's say, you know, Charlie Brown got some more minutes. Or maybe he played, you know, again, played Jericho Sims some more minutes. Guess where we'd be right now, CP? Cancun. 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 You and, know what I'm saying? Yeah. So what do you want him to do? Yeah. If everybody was healthy, he probably would have a 10-man rotation. But unfortunately, that's not what happened. I'm with you 100% and Monica. It's just, it's part of the game and the circumstances. These are the, the cards that he's dealt right now. I mean, going into it, before Julius Randle goes down, you bring in OG Ananobi, you, you make the, the Berks and Bogdanovich trade, you literally have 11 potential players that you can yeah, rotate exactly. in a playoff and be deep, right? You're, you're Hard definitely playing be, sports. It stinks, right. but it's, it's one of the shitty things about sports. Right.
And, and so now the idea, I had a caller yesterday say, well, you know, the bench guy showed a lot of energy there in garbage time. We should have been playing them earlier, starting them. I mean, Ooh. come on, man. The idea that Diakante and, and God bless him, Daquan Jeffries, I've been wearing out his name because he's the only guy I know that's left on the bench. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, these are the guys yeah. you're left with when you lose four impact players in your rotation, bro. Listen, I think one thing we've learned as fans, and CP, you and I are the same age. Fans are always going to criticize, no matter, they're going to criticize the players, the front office, the coaches. And I remember, I always tell this story, one of the first, t- I was at a Nick game one time around 1999. It was December of 99. I was actually versus the Raptors. And I was sitting up in the 400s, and I didn't listen to a ton of sports talk radio at the time, although my dire fandom was still 100%, because I was actually living three hours from the city. And there was a group of guys sitting right behind me, um, and they were just bashing Van Gundy the whole game. Mm. And I'm like, what? Like, we were in the finals last year. We're, you know, top three in the East right now. We got a great game versus the Raptors. We actually won that game on a Patrick Ewing jump shot. And that was one of the first times I really heard fans bash a coach. But at that, at that time, we were in the finals a few months ago. And that year, we got to the conference finals. Mm. So it's always been a thing. Now, obviously, we've had some coaches over the years that probably deserve some bashing. But it's always been a thing, and it's it's even when even when you're winning, for some reason fans oh, not all fans, but some fans it just it was like they always hate the coach. I I don't yeah. understand. There's probably Yankee fans that hated Joe Torre. I I, I I never understood that. Yeah, I, I didn't I didn't get it, man. And you know the the Burks thing. And shout out my guy Big Money Burks because he's stepping up when they need him to. The fresh tried him. He fresh his legs. In the, in, after the trade of Burks, and you know I'm a big Burks guy too. Yeah. After the trade of Burks was on the middle of the ocean, he couldn't hit water. Like, exactly. He had no choice but to sit him. Exactly. And McBride was on the ascension. I was to completely on board with that. This is great. He was great. The way Burks was playing, he deserved no chances in this rotation. He was in there. He was gun. I mean, he was just gunning. He was playing one on five, just he was. just he bombing was away. Crazy. Right. You these last two <laughs> games in bombing. Indy. He was oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Building a brick house. But these last two games in Indy, he's getting everything in the flow of the offense. When they need him to ISO and break it down, he's getting efficient buckets. He's he's drawing fouls. He's getting to the free throw line and hitting yep. them, something that the Knicks on a whole do not do under Tibbs. They just never hit free throws. They're always around 70-something percent. So right now, he's giving them what they need. I actually think they're going to need to go to him a little bit more in game five. You're going to have to let AAB just go, man, because he's probably not going to be yeah, back next may- year. <laughs> Let it fly. Empty the clip. Empty yeah, the clip. I think Big money, you man. Make a little more of AB tomorrow. I, I I actually expect Jalen Brunson to basically be Jalen Brunson tomorrow. I wouldn't be shocked if you see a lot more Deuce McBride. Remember that game in Golden State where yeah, the Deuce play all forty eight. Probably Josh close to it. All, yeah, I suspect I might, we might see something like that tomorrow where you see a lot of Deuce and you know Alec as well. But it's it's all hands on deck, and you know, and hopefully we get that win and. You know, just one game at a time. I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not really with the crowd. That's like, you know, we win game one and I'm chanting Nixon four. That's not who I am. Yeah. One game. I can't even think about front one game at a time. Let's get this win tomorrow. I know the team's going to be ready. The Pacers are going to be ready. You know, everybody, everyone's going to be ready. Let's all, go. All sports world eyes, all eyes are on Madison Square Garden tomorrow night at 8 p.m.